So we're going to be looking at the anatomy of a promise. So on the right here, I have uh, my Sublime Text Editor open with an index that is just calling console that is doing this little decoration here. And then we have a promise anatomy that JS file that is empty and that we're going to be working on. So let's do a simple exercise. Let's create an array and let's call it singles and here we just have a bunch of numbers so let's just go one two three four five oh, let's let's go to nine i like the number nine seven eight nine okay and the goal here is just to uh double all these like singles basically so let's go down and create a doubles variable and here we're just going to make it a promise. So essentially for the promise, all we need to do is to call the promise constructor. So we're using the new keyword, new promise. And inside of here, we are passing, this is going to be an arrow function. We can just use a regular function, but um, I don't see the point of doing that here. So we'll just go with resolve. It expects two argument, resolve and reject. So if it works out, it resolves it. If it doesn't, it rejects it. That's pretty intuitive. So let's put the arrow function. Okay. And inside here, basically you would do your computation. And then if it succeeds, like a JSON call to an API and uh, it succeeds, you say resolve and get like the API data. If it fails, you said something happened like network error or something. But let's just look at what it looks like. So resolve would give us, let's say, what I wanted was to double all the singles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take singles and I'm just going to map it. And in the map, I'm just going to put number for each of the values and I'm going to return that times two. Okay. Looks good. And let's just console that out the doubles and see what we get. Console.log doubles. All right. So let me save this and let's refresh here. And you see that here we get like a promise, a promise object. So the promise object tells me that uh, the status is resolved. And the promise value is an array with nine items in it. And you see that it's doubled out. So now, how do I get access to that? Just doing this would not get me um, the values that I need, or at least I cannot use it in this format. In order to use it, I have to use the then keyword. So how do you know that you have access to a then uh, method? Looking at the prototype here, like we have done in prior exercise, we see that promise does uh, reveal like a catch function, a constructor, which we just used. And then we're going to get into symbol a little later, but right now let's just focus on this tree. So then will allow us to say, okay, it has succeeded. And then it's returning to me like the data from that success call. Um, in plain English, I believe that's going to be the best way that I would be able to say it. So let's just uh, keep this here. I want to use it again, and you're going to see why. But this time around, I'm going to take advantage of the then keyword. So on line eight here, I'm going to do doubles that then. And I'm going to be able to catch that value. And all I can do here is just say console that log the data okay let's save this let's refresh and you see here now i have access to that data and you can see that now i can use it now this is all good and you know in, in the best case scenario the promise will always work and we don't have a problem but what happens if um, it doesn't work so let's go back here and let's just um, comment this out. And instead of that, let's use reject. And we say reject, no luck today. And let's just put like a sad face right there, why not? 
and let's save this don't forget to save command s and let's do command r okay what's interesting here is that now if we look at at the pro at the body of the promise the objects here say that it's rejected and the value is no luck today but the thing is it doesn't even let us go any further the computation just stops because we have an uncaught uh, error basically so this can halt your whole code because you did not catch the error so since we're talking about catching if we're looking at the proto again we do have like a catch method that is there for these use cases okay so when there's an error in one of your promise and i'm saying one of your promise because you can have a promise chain you can use and you should always have like the catch method as a backup just to be able to take on those errors and uh, ensure that your program just doesn't halt like that because this is an uncut and that can create a lot of problem and then on top of that it doesn't really tell you anything it's like uh, going to index html line one which is not really um pointing you to the to the to the right part of the code so this that's that's just another reason to really uh, take advantage of that catch method which we will do right now so let's go back into our code here let's just put this in a new line and then after the then let's just use the catch method this way um uh, it's a that because it's a chain method and here we're just gonna have e that is gonna be the error and we're gonna console out error e okay using the error uh, class we can do that so now let's go back do the command r uh, i forgot to save once again command s here and command r on this side and now you see that not only we get an error that comes out like the way that we logged it but now we have uh, something that is being called here uh, basically anatomy js 11. so well 11 is just like where uh, we caught it but that's not where the error happened okay so um, if you want to be a little more precise and help you with your debugging then we just should take this error here let's just take this error we don't need the parents here anymore too many and let's just use it here so what i want is that ability to give us exactly um, the line where the problem did happen so let me make sure that i have enough closing parent again <laughs> so let's do command s command r and now you see that it says promise anatomy js on line four and if i click on this it's exactly where the error did happen so this is very key imagine if you have a huge code base and for some reason something happened and you can just this is a way a good habit to have and then you can just point back to exactly what happened okay so let's go back to the console and you see that this is why you should have like a catch element now one other thing is used this way promise are not really useful i mean it's just like a plain function if we want to simulate a real case scenario we can maybe like um, uh, delay uh, the execution of like uh, the body of the promise like we would have um, in a scenario where we were like uh, querying an api so let's try something and this time around just to show you uh, the beauty of promises let's take our resolve and wrap it into a set timeout so let me just go to the next line here and I will do set timeout. Okay. Set timeout is gonna be a function. And inside of that function, well, well it can be an arrow function. I really don't need this at all. Inside of that function, we're gonna take our resolve and put it in there. And let's give it 
let's say, um, I don't know, three seconds. Um, and I wanna console log doubles again. So what's gonna happen is this console.log is gonna execute right away. But in here, when I have the data, I want to console out doubles again, just to show you those different states with promises. So if I'm going to have two lines um, beside inside an arrow function, I should just use curly braces. And let me go to the next line here, doubles. And once again here, so now what I'm doing is basically um, using set timeout to delay the execution of this and to mimic or simulate what a real promise might look like. And then here I'm showing doubles right away and I'm gonna have the first state of promise. And then when it's executed, I'm gonna get like um, the state of the promise here again. Okay, let's look at what it looks like. It might be easier by seeing it, understanding. Okay, so I have a problem again here with the syntax on line 14 okay yeah. okay um, this is just like this parenthesis hell let me just go back and fix it real quick so on line 14 I don't need this second parent okay no problem JavaScript we're gonna get there and let me make sure everything else is fine I hope it is let's just go command R and I have another one that tells me like something is missing. Okay, so here now I have this then that's opening a parent and there's nothing after. So I have to close it. And three time is a charm, comment R. Okay, so right away this one executes on line 10 that we have. And let me expand it a little here so we can see it. So on line 10, we have a promise and the promise status is pending and we don't have anything as a promise value. After that, it goes into the body of our set timeout, executes this, and then at the end here, the status changed from pending to resolved and we have a promise uh, value. So you can imagine that if we did the same thing for the, uh, the catch statement, instead of, oh, let's just do it, just, uh, so we are, let's just do it. Um, if you don't, uh, don't take my word for it, like we say, uh, let's just do the same thing here. And we're gonna see that, what is the other state or the, the other status that you can get from your promises. So let me do this, make sure that it's properly wrapped, okay. And I want doubles here, but this time around, I'm going to take the reject. Let's cut that. And let's put it right in here. Okay, so let's comment this one out. And let's reject here. No luck today. So let's save this and let's redo the same thing. Yep, and here now, instead of like... Um, um, uh, resolved we have rejected so I think uh, that summarized basically the three simple state that you can have uh, when you're using a promise pending is when uh, you have started or you have called it and it's deferred to it's doing its thing um, on its own little uh, universe right there it's not blocking uh, the computation or execution of other stuff which is like what is very cool about it and the whole async nature then it does hit stuff, it's little magic, comes back and say, hey, um, I am good, resolved, or oh, it's been rejected. So basically, that's what I wanted to go through here. Oftentimes, though, you're going to see that promises are going to be used inside the body of a function. So let's look at what it looks like in the next video.